What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Truck Talk, brought to you by me, inspired by my man, Chili. Well, yeah, you probably already know what today's Truck Talk's gonna be about. Uh, just this, you know, little snafu that happened this past weekend with Big Daddy Trump. Uh, I've worked with the, I've worked with the Secret Service on three different occasions in three different countries. So I'm going to talk to you guys about that here in just a second. But before we get into this conversation, can we please just all acknowledge how freaking epic Donald Trump is, man? Like whether you want him to be president or not, just how freaking epic this dude is. I mean, he's an anomaly, man. You guys might not understand. Let me tell you what I mean. You might not understand if you've never done any public speaking and you've never been on a stage like that before, but he's up there giving this speech. And um, when you're up on a stage like that, it's really disorienting. Just the sound and the microphone and, you know, all of the the input you're getting visually from the crowd and then trying to think about what you're next words are going to be and just keep all your thoughts in order. It's an extremely disorienting environment. And for this dude, one, to have the presence of mind in the midst of that disorienting environment, to realize he's being shot at, and then to respond to the uh, Secret Service telling him to get down, for him to be able to like so quickly take cover and hit the deck in the midst of that environment. Uh, I just thought was really impressive, man. Uh, he, that Joker, man, he just like, he hits the deck and takes cover almost immediately. And then <clears throat> for him to stand up and I watched a video where you could hear through the microphone, the, the conversation that he's having with the, the secret service, when he gets back up on his feet, he's telling the Secret Service, hold on a minute, let me get my shoes back on. I don't know why his shoes fell off, but he's he's telling him, let me get my shoes back on. And then to have the freaking courage and presence of mind to tell the Secret Service, hold on just a minute, and for him to poke his head out and give his, you know, fist bump and make that iconic photograph that all you guys have probably already seen with blood streaked across his face and to get people fired up. I mean, the dude is epic, man. I don't know that anyone else in that position, the dude's not, he's not, it's not like he has a military background or any sort of um, training like that. I mean, I don't know that anyone else that would be running for president in this day and age would have the courage and the presence of mind to react the way that he did. Epic freaking dude, man. Whether you like him or not, or want him to be your president or not. Um. All right, so all of the stuff that you that you probably are seeing about this occurrence, uh, out of all of it, there's a lot of freaking attacks on the Secret Service and the men and women who do that job. And like I said, I've augmented them or supported them three different times, their counter-assault team. And what I want to tell you, man, I want to tell you the truth. The Secret Service has the suckiest job on earth. I mean, th they are completely defensive or reactionary, right? And that puts you in a uh, that puts you at a real tactical disadvantage. Um, so yeah, they have a really crappy job to do, a hard job to do. Not to mention it's super easy to become complacent while you're doing that job because you're doing it day in and day out. And obviously, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, nothing ever happens. And so it's really easy to become complacent. Um, it's taxing mentally, physically, they travel a lot, uh, it's a hard job. But what makes it even more difficult for the Secret Service agents that are out there doing that job 
is the fact that um, because of the current political climate and really the political climate that I was serving under when I augmented the Secret Service being uh, Obama, those guys and girls are so afraid to react because they know that if they react to a situation that they, they've been trained to react to, and it turns out that their reaction was, um, was not needed, or, you know, it turns out that, you know, maybe they, maybe they shouldn't have used force. They know that the government that they are serving under is going to throw them under the freaking bus, man. They know that this current administration and, and climate here in the United States, they know that uh, their leaders don't have their back. And so the guys that are guys and girls that are doing that job are so hesitant to do the job that they've been called or, or that they've been tasked with. They're so hesitant to to use any force because they know that they will freaking get burned at the stake if they end up being wrong. And the fact of the matter is when you're when you're reactionary like that and you're reacting in real time to really stressful things, you're doing the best you can and you're not all it's not always going to be done perfectly. That's just the reality of it. You guys that are in law enforcement, obviously you know that. Uh, we're all human. I've got a story to really explain what that looks like to you guys while we were overseas one time and we had something happen while I was augmenting the secret service and we didn't react the way we probably should have reacted because we all knew that uh, if this individual happened to be just a, a an idiot who who was unarmed but breaking the law uh, breaking the rules of the environment that we were in we all knew that if we took this individual down, that it was going to be an international incident and that we were going to get thrown under the bus. So that's what they're dealing with, man. So before you criticize them, first of all, you don't freaking understand the complexity of the job they're doing. And you don't understand that they know that no one has their back, but they still step up to do the job anyways for for some odd reason. Um, all of that being said, it was pretty wild to see what happened. Nobody's talking about the fact that uh, Mr. Trump's ear is never going to be the same. That sucks. But I'm glad that this shooter wasn't successful. And a lot of you guys are wondering, was this, was this dude like, did they help him? Did they, did he have help? You know, was it, was this planned? Well, look, man, you're never going to freaking know the answer to that. I will tell you, if somebody within the government or outside of the government, some powerful person or or bureaucracy did um, coerce this guy to make this attempt. Well, they sure did a freaking terrible job, man. They sure did a terrible job. This dude gets up on a roof with a with daggone iron sights to try to hit an eight-inch target. At from what I've seen. 100, 150 yards away with iron sights. I think he had iron sights from the pictures I saw. Um, so if somebody was coercing him or helping him in that act, boy, they sure did a terrible job uh, when it comes to equipping him. I just think it was a, I think it was a mentally deranged 
person who decided to do something really stupid. And he was unsuccessful because he was stupid. Carry on, Donald Trump. I think there's a 0% chance now, as long as he stays alive, there's a 0% chance that Mr. Trump will not be our next president. It's going to be some interesting times for us here in the United States of America in the coming months. So there's a lot more that could be said about this. I may follow it up with some more comments later. But that's what I think about it right now. Freaking Donald Trump's epic. The Secret Service is hamstrung. They can't do their job. Because no one has their back, including the American people. And that goes for pretty much law, all law enforcement across the board. And, uh, this idiot that made this attempt, I don't think we'll ever know the truth. But if someone was helping him or coercing him, they sure did a bad job at equipping him. <laughs> Freaking terrible, man. If you got anything out of this episode, go get you a hat, get you a t-shirt. Keep my man Chili in the dungeon. Got a brand new website for you guys. Go check it out. I'll attach it in the description of this episode. This channel exists because of you guys that support us. Uh, our patrons and our partners. So as long as you guys keep tuning in and supporting us, we'll keep these truck talks coming. Love you guys. Enough said.